6, and it is time for another edition of the Bible Show Truth Hour here on POET Radio. The first thing I would like to do is welcome our YouTube listeners. Welcome our YouTube listeners. Again, YouTube, you are tuning in to another edition of the Bible Show Truth Hour here on the POET Network. Today's lesson is Planting the Seeds of Salvation, Part 2. Again, Planting the Seeds of Salvation, Part 2. The lesson was so riveting last week that we broke it up in half, that we did not get a chance to finish the lesson. But today, by the grace of God, we are finishing today's lesson, and this is the second half, and it is Planting the Seeds of Salvation Part 2. Let's go ahead and get into what we believe, brothers and sisters. The Truth Hour Bible Class is an online social media Bible-based ministry. We teach the uncut word of God as it is written in the Bible, line upon line, precept upon precept, Isaiah 28 and 10. Our mission is to lead as many souls to Jesus, the Christ, so that through the word of God and the keeping of the commandments that we may receive salvation. Our motto is, if you cannot read it, then do not believe it. This is what we believe. Number one, we believe in the name of Jesus. We have no dispute with the use of other names that are variations of the name Jesus because we know Jesus is the English version of the name. There's a Latin version. There's a Greek version. There is a um, uh, Hebrew version. And we have no disputes with any of the versions that you choose to use. But because the people who watch and listen to our lesson speak English, then we prefer to use the English version. Number two, we believe that Jesus alone is our Lord and Savior. Number three, we believe in the Sabbath day, which is from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Number four, we believe in the seven feast days of the Lord as listed in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Number five, we believe that we, the so-called African-American and those who were spread throughout the four corners of the earth through the process of the transatlantic slave trade are indeed the Israelites that the Bible wrote and spoke about and all the statutes, laws and commandments apply to us. Number six. We believe that we must still keep the law to the best of our ability. We believe that we must keep the Lord's dietary law, according to Leviticus, the 11th chapter. And this is why we eat no pork, no catfish, no shrimp, no lobster, or anything that is deemed unpermissible for us to eat according to the law of the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten in the book of Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Number eight, we believe that both the scriptures or what you call the Old Testament and what we call the Old Testament and the testimony or what is called the New Testament must be used when teaching the word of God. You cannot be a New Testament Christian or an Old Testament scholar alone. You must be both. Number nine, we don't believe in Sunday Sabbath service. We don't believe in the Trinity doctrine. We don't believe in wearing or bearing a cross or any images that symbolize a religion. We don't believe in any holidays that originated in the worship of other gods, such as Easter, Christmas, New Year's Day, and others. These, according to the Bible, are against Christ or anti-Christ, again, according to the Bible. The holy days that we prescribe to are listed in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Number 10, we believe that salvation through Jesus is for all people. It doesn't matter your race, color, nationality, ethnicity. We believe that 
Salvation through Jesus is for all people, according to Revelations 7 and 9. Now, let's get into today's lesson, brothers and sisters, planting the seeds of salvation, part two. Now, last week, we went through the four steps. The seed of curiosity, the seed of confirmation, and today we're going to deal with watering the seed and preparing for the harvest. Now, for those who were not on last week, let me go ahead and bring you up to speed. For those who were not on last week, let me go ahead and bring you up to speed. Let's deal with the seed of curiosity first. Many people view the truth hour for the first time. And they hear something that we read out of the word of God, out of the Bible. And it sparks their curiosity. So through the word of God, we have planted the seed of curiosity. Now, brothers and sisters, we may not be able to go any further than making someone curious. They may run into another brother or sister who double down on what we spoke about that made them curious, such as the Lord's Sabbath day or such as the holidays versus holy days. And they say, well, man, I heard that from somewhere before. So that person that comes back behind us and teaches the same thing that we have taught have planted the seed of confirmation. Now they heard it from someone else and it has confirmed the seed that we planted, which was curiosity. But in between the seed of curiosity and you being able to water the seed once it's already confirmed, that's when the devil steps in, and that's when the devil steps into play. And that's what we're going to talk about first on the Bible Show Truth Hour today. We're going to talk about when you receive and accept that confirmation before you can even get a chance to water the seed. That's when Satan jumps in and tries to distract you. Again, that's when Satan jumps in and tries to distract you. We're going to start this off at the book of 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John, the second chapter. And we're going to talk about this and we're going to deal with this, brothers and sisters, because again, the devil, the closer you get to God, as I spoke to with my brother Dub Seas this morning, the closer you get to him, that's when it's, the devil really starts to ramp up and amp up his attacks on your mind. He'll make you think that right is wrong and wrong is right. He'll make you think left when you should be thinking right, brothers and sisters. He'll your emotions and turn it upside down and inside out. He would take your struggle that you are currently going through in your life and say, man, you ain't supposed to be going through that. Look at all those people you looked out for. and Look at all those people you helped out. Why aren't they here for you? Again, he knows that you're moving closer and closer to God, brothers and sisters. So the closer you move to God, the more the devil is going to come to you through your wife, your husband, your children your quote-unquote best friends, your family members, your co-workers. Let's go to the book of First, First John, the second chapter, and we're going to read verses 15 through 17. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So again, brothers and sisters, when you start losing, when your car start having trouble, and maybe your car start breaking down, and maybe things don't end up being the way they used to be, brothers and sisters, that's when the devil started coming in and he started making you think that those things are important. That your career is important. And when I say important, I'm talking about important over God or the word of God. He started making you think those things. 
as if if you lose that, then it's it. It's over with. No, brothers and sisters, you need to worry about and we need to worry about losing God. Verse 17. And the world passes away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So again, everything that you have outside of this body in the form of possessions will one day be taken away and it will pass away, brothers and sisters. But our goal is to plant the seed of salvation. Because it is that life that Jesus spoke about that he brought that you may have more abundantly. That is the goal. This is why we read this. This is why we study this. This is why we take the time to get to know Jesus for ourselves and establish that personal relationship with him. It's all about salvation. So again, when it appears as if you're not winning because you don't have what other people have. That is a trick of Satan, the devil. Let's go to, book, the, to the book of 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. And let's read more about the tricks of Satan. The devil works on those who are headed towards the truth. And he work on those who are headed towards the truth the most. Once you start accepting this thing, and I'm talking about really accepting this thing, you will lose some family members, you will lose some friends, and some people who you thought was close to you going to appear to be walking away. Let's go to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 8. 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 8, and it reads, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So again, when Satan was kicked out of heaven with those fallen angels that were kicked out with them, do you think they just chilling, waiting on their day of judgment? No, brothers and sisters. Not only is the devil walking around seeking those <clears throat> whom he may devour, but he got an army of angels fallen angels with them seeking those whom they may devour too. So when we say this thing is a spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters, it's your mind. It's all about your mind. Why do your feelings get hurt so easy? Why do you always feel like someone is attacking you? Why do you always take things so personal? It's because of that spirit inside of you, brothers and sisters. See, when you got the word of God in you and, and, and you are filled with faith, then things don't shake you as easy because you say, oh, okay, this is, this is part of God's plan for me in my life. He got me going through this for a reason. You start looking optimistically about what you are going through, what you are experiencing in life. But when you don't have God and when you don't have faith, you might know the name Jesus. But see, when you don't know the word of God, everything is so pessimistic. Everything is so negative. Everything is so, man, you think the worst before you think the best. And you harbor these things inside of you. And you carry these things around with you because you don't understand that God is always working for you in your life. Who do you think led Abraham up to kill his son? It was the Lord that did that. Brothers and sisters, everybody must be tempted and everybody must be tested. 
I'm going to say that again. Everybody must be tempted and everybody must be tested. The difference between the two is that God does not tempt you. God tests you and it is Satan the devil who tempts you. Okay? Again, it is God who tests you and it is Satan the devil who tempts you, brothers and sisters. Jesus was led up to the mount in the spirit. He was led up. Who was he led up there by? To be tempted, brothers and sisters. Satan can't lead Jesus nowhere. His father, brothers and sisters. Jesus had to be tested just like we have to be tested. Throw yourself off of this cliff right here. If you're the son of God, you can command these angels to come down. Jesus didn't curse the devil out. He just said, is it not written? That thou, that you shall not tempt the Lord your God? Who's Satan's God? It's Jesus, brothers and sisters. We've given the devil too much credit. The devil can't do anything that God does not allow him to do because God is his boss. And Satan can't do anything that you don't allow him to do. And ultimately, if you are in the first resurrection, then you're going to be judges over these fallen angels, brothers and sisters. You got more power than what you think. You are capable of having more power than what you think you already have. Let's go to the book of John, the 10th chapter. Be mindful of the spirit of those that try to discourage you from Falling in line with this word of God. Again, you've already been curious because someone came and taught you something new. I've never heard it like that before. And then someone came behind that brother or that sister and confirmed, yeah, you didn't know that Saturday was really the Sabbath day. That's the seventh day of the week. And the Romans came in through Constantine and the Council of Nicaea and changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. You didn't know that? Yeah, I heard somebody say that. Now they're confirming. They just dropped the seed of confirmation on you. But right before you can begin to water the seed, oh, you ain't going to listen to those Hebrew Israelites. Oh, you ain't going to listen to, oh, that's a cult. I ain't no Israelite. I ain't no. People are quick to say that. I said, well, what's your nationality? Well, what do you mean, what's my nationality? I, I'm an American. I said, well, your people didn't originate from America. What's your nationality? Well, I'm an African-American. I said, well, Africa is the name of a continent. And Africa was renamed by the Romans. And that's the name of a continent. So you don't see anybody that comes over here from Nigeria who calls themselves African-American. They call themselves Nigerian-Americans. You don't see anybody over here from, um, give me another uh, uh, a name, uh, Ghana, who calls themselves African-American. They call themselves Ghanaian-American. So why can't you call yourself who you really are? You are Israelites. And the word Hebrew comes from Abraham, and we want to break this down because Abraham was a Hebrew, which means wanderer. The Arabs today, they are also Hebrews, okay? Because they are descendants from Abraham too, through Ishmael. So we inherited the term Hebrew from Abraham, but the term Israelite came from our father Jacob. Now, that's where the split happens because, see, the Edomite, he's a Hebrew. The Ishmaelite or the Arab, he's an e uh, a Hebrew. But the split happens when it comes to Jacob. Our lineage goes, not, goes through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that's where the establishment of the term Israelite came from. So that's why we adopt the term Israelite. Hebrew through Abraham and Israelite through Jacob. And so in other lessons, brothers and sisters, we can show you how in 70 AD the Romans came in. And we showed you that on part one, how the Romans came in and kicked us out of our land. And we spread it throughout the land of Ham, which is called Africa today. 
And through the transatlantic slave trade, many of these so-called Africans or Hamites, when the Europeans start coming over with the, with, with the ships, they began to deliver us unto the European. But again, it was all in God's will because as we spoke about last week, in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, we were under the curse of the Lord. And we'll speak about that as we go further. Let's go to John the 10th chapter, verses 7 through 10. John the 10th chapter, verses 7 through 10. Those who try to discourage you, be mindful of the spirit that's in those people. You, you, you are trying to search for God. You are diligent in your heart and really trying to know the truth. And your mother did the best that she could. Your grandmother did the best that she could. But God saw fit that now it is time for you to mature in his word. As soon as you get to that point, someone is going to say, man, you ain't got to listen. to. We don't need to do all that. We ain't under the law no more. And we just read to you last week that the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. And you're going to listen to somebody who say that we ain't got to keep the law no more? Brothers and sisters, John, the 10th chapter, verses 17. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares about you. Be sober, be vigilant. I want to make sure. I think I covered that already. Well, let's go to um, let's let's read nine and ten. Nine and ten. I think I just read seven and eight. It said, "Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accompanied in your brethren, the God of grace, who has called us unto the eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish." Strengthen and settle you. So again, we're going to struggle this whole life. Expect, brothers and sisters, that when you walk out the door tomorrow, you're going to struggle. Expect when you wake up tomorrow morning that you're going to struggle. This life is a life full of struggle, brothers and sisters. So don't expect not to have problems. Not for people to betray you and turn their back against you. See, the issue is that because we don't know the word of God, it catches, off, catches us off guard. Expect it to happen. I'm telling you, according to the word of God, that it is going to happen. So from this day forward, if it catches you off guard and you are so surprised that people are turning their back against you, walking away from you, treating you like you're not supposed to be treated then guess what, brothers and sisters? You are not listening. You are in some fantasy world that the Bible is trying to take you out of. You have not taken the, the peel, the red peel. Remember in Matrix, they had the red peel or the blue peel? You can stay where you at, thinking the way you think by taking this peel. But if you take this peel, this peel of truth, then you can come out of the thinking of this world and begin to look at things from a whole different perspective. And this Bible gives you a whole different perspective. And this is why people can't deal with people who know the word of God and who know the Bible. Because you can't knock them off of their square. You can't rattle them like that. You can't move us like that. There's a calmness in our spirit. Even when everybody else is panicking, there's a calm in our spirit because we know that these things are supposed to be happening. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. chapter. We're talking about what happens before you get a chance to water the seed. Satan is going to come right behind soon as you've confirmed that what you have been listening to is the truth. Soon as you confirm that, brothers and sisters, Satan is going to come right behind you. And he's going to come through somebody that you care about, somebody that you know, and somebody that you love. And he's going to try to discourage you from that. So you got to know what to listen to and what not listen to. You got to know what to take in and what to spit out. Brothers and sisters, let's go to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. He said, 
all that came before him was thieves and robbers. He also mentioned those who were coming after him, brothers and sisters. And that's what we want to deal with today. Jesus has already been here in the flesh. He came through Mary. And we know what came before him, thieves and robbers. But let's talk about the ones that are around today. Matthew 24, verses 3 through 5. It said, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So brothers and sisters, we understand that in the name of Jesus, very deceptively, Maybe they are dressed nice. And what we consider to be a nice dressing person in a suit or a tie. Maybe they speak very well. And maybe they can roll off of their tongue very seducing words that sound pretty good to you. But brothers and sisters, if you know the word of God, then you can't be fooled by the devil. And I always say that the devil can't win playing God's game. So the devil don't want to play God's game. He wants to grab you out of the game of God and pull you into his arena and his field. And guess what? You can't win. on. You ever tried to get down in the dirt with somebody? Maybe they spoke about you negatively on social media and you responded like and kind and you just couldn't match up to the things that they were saying about you because you didn't have the same malice in your heart that they have in their heart see there are some levels that you can't go down to because you're not made that way you can't compete or compare to the field of Satan and his game because you don't have that in your spirit so instead of trying to get low with somebody and get in the dirt with them, stay high and make them come above. They won't be able to deal with you like that, brothers and sisters. They're not going to be able to deal with you with that. Let's see this word of God. I want to just open up this book and just show you. When you open up this book, brothers and sisters, and you open up these pages in the book, and you spread it open. What does this look like? It looks like wings, brothers and sisters. When you open this Bible, it looks like wings. This Bible, brothers and sisters, allows you to ascend above all the tricks of the devil. But when you ain't using this right here, brothers and sisters, then guess what? You got to stay grounded. You got to stay with the knowledge of this world and you got to try to compete with Satan on his playing field and you're going to lose every time. And you're not going to understand how somebody can be as evil as they can be, how somebody can be so heartless as they can be. It's because that's what you're dealing with. That's the level that you're dealing with, brothers and sisters. Let's go to the book of uh, 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Again, you'll get somebody, they speak very well. What they're saying sounds like it makes sense, but you got to go behind them and verify what they are saying with the word of God. Jesus spoke about people coming after him who was going to deceive many people in his name. Well, people ain't deceiving you in the name of Jesus uh, in the alley. They doing it behind the pulpit. On platforms such as these, biblical platforms, brothers and sisters, they never read the Bible, but they can always tell you what God said. 
God wants you to do this and God wants you to do that. And I'm telling you that right now, brothers and sisters, that God wants you to have that house and he wants you to have that car. And if you just send some money in to me, they can always tell you what God wants you to do and what God wants you to have, but they can never read it to you out of the Bible. Let's read in the Bible what this is called. First Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses one through seven. It says, now the spirits speak of expressly that in the latter times, which is now, and Jesus spoke about that, the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what is the topic and the subject of this chapter? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, let's read about what some of these doctrines of devils and seducing spirits are. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry. God never forbid you to marry anybody. Uh, forbid you to marry anybody. So if somebody comes and teaches you that, that if you have an office in the church that you can't get married to a woman, or you can't get married to a man. I'm talking about a woman, and they're forbidding you to marry. Then that is a doctrine of a devil. It says, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So you can't be a vegetarian and try to convince other people that God wants you to be a vegetarian too. It may be good for you to be a vegetarian if that's what you want to do with your life. But once you start teaching people that this is a doctrine that God does not want you to eat the meat that he permitted us to eat in Leviticus, the 11th chapter, then although you may be trying to be a good person in your heart, you have just now began to preach what is called in the Bible, the doctrine of a devil. Verse four, when someone tells you this, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for if it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. My family always asked me to pray over the dinner when we have family gatherings. How can I pray over pork? How can I pray over catfish? When I know that according to the word of God in Leviticus the 11th chapter, that these things are unclean and they are not permissible for us to eat. I can't pray over those things. But again, there are some churches that will serve you ham right after Bible uh, um, Sunday service. They will serve you ham on your plate. They will serve you catfish. Go down in the basement. We got catfish dinners for sale at the church. Brothers and sisters, we're talking about seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It says, if the brethren put if the brethren put this in remembrance of if if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you shall be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourish up the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane old wise fables, and exercise th thyself rather unto godliness, for bodily exercise pro pro profiteth little. But goodliness, or I'm sorry, godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So, brothers and sisters, let's move forward and let's talk about water in the spirit. I just wanted you to know, and I had to spend a lot of time on this, because you need to be aware that somebody's going to come and try to throw you off your square and say that you don't need that old word of God. You don't need that no more. We we in the New Testament. You don't even need to read the Old Testament no more. Somebody tells you that, you got to get away from them, brothers and sisters. Or say, you know what? I'd just rather not talk about this anymore. Because sometimes it's your mama. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's your grandmama. Sometimes it's your daddy. So those people are attached to you for life, but you don't have to talk about those things with them. Let's go to the book of Acts. 13th chapter, 
Let's go to the book of Acts, the 13th chapter. And for those who just tuned in, you tuned in to the Bible show Truth Hour. Where we're talking about planting the seeds of salvation, part two. The book of Acts, the 13th chapter. Turn your Bibles there. A part of watering the seed is attending church or Bible class. If you can't tune in, if you can't go uh, physically, then tune in. But we must continue to be in the midst of the truth. And so we encourage you to tune in to the Israel of God on the Sabbath day, Saturdays. We encourage you to tune in to the Wake Up Show on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m. We encourage you to tune in to the Bomb of Gilead on Thursday nights. Um, come into my room. I believe that's on Wednesday nights. Brother um, Elijah on Friday nights and, and, and on the Sabbath day. We encourage you to keep tuning in to these brothers who are teaching the true and uncut and, and, and raw truth of God, brothers and sisters. This is how you water the seed. You just can't wait until the Sabbath day for this thing to come around for you to say, oh, okay, now I'm going to listen for this one or two hours. No, brothers and sisters, you got to keep pumping this thing inside of you every day because believe it, the devil's going to try to pump things in you all from Sunday through Friday. He's going to try to pump this negativity inside of you. And if you ain't getting enough of the word of God throughout the course of the week, then brothers and sisters, you ain't getting enough. Get this word in you. On your way to work, listen to some lessons. On your way home from work, listen to some lessons. You in traffic for 30 minutes to an hour. Take that time to listen to the word of God and get it inside of you. Acts the 13th chapter, verses 42 through 47. Acts the 13th chapter, verses 42 through 47. And when the Jews were going out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So even the Gentiles, the, the Europeans or white folks were keeping the Sabbath day, brothers and sisters. It says, now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw that the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul. So how is it? They, they got jealous. They got envious because now Barnabas and Paul are drawing crowds <clears throat> from the Gentiles. Isn't it funny? And I'm going to say this, brothers and sisters. We always think we're doing it when we start getting white folks coming to our events. Oh, man, we got, y'all see them? We got white folks coming out to our event now. And these other black Israelites were looking at them like, uh-uh, we can't have them getting the white folks the Gentile, we can't have them getting them coming to listen to them. And they started to get envious. And they started to get jealous according to what we're reading now. It says, it says, but when the Jews saw that the multitudes, they were and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it's necessary that the word of God should be first, should first have been spoken to you, Israelites, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy, everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so have the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou should have been of the earth. So brothers and sisters, this is why we accept anyone who watches this show. Many of our super brew brothers and sisters don't want to teach nobody else. 
They don't want to extend the word of God as, as far as salvation to other nationalities or nations of people. But we want to do God's work. So that we don't get wrapped up in slavery and in what happened to us in this country and in other countries. We don't get wrapped up in that. We don't point and look at the white man and say, hey, your ancestors, your people did this to us. Yes, that's true. But God used them to scatter us as a form of punishment for us disobeying him and turning away from him. So is it their fault for doing what God commanded them to do? No, brothers and sisters, it's our fault for making God do this to us. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter. We're talking about watering the seed of truth, brothers and sisters. You have to keep this thing in you because, again, people are going to try to pull you away. As soon as you get close, something's going to happen in your life. And you're going to say, I ain't going to church today. I ain't going to Bible class today. A friend of mine just passed away from COVID-19. I don't feel good. I ain't going to go today. I don't want to listen today. I, I'm going through a lot in my life. I don't want to listen. That's exactly the time when you should go. That's exactly the time when you should be listening. When you going through hell. When everybody around you is starting to lose their life through this pandemic and other means. That's exactly when you should start going and, and going more and gaining that understanding of what it takes to understand what you are going through in your life. The book of Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter, when we are young, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us to remember our creator, to remember God, because we got all this energy, not only to learn the word of God, but to begin to share the word of God. When we start getting older, then we're not as active as we used to be. We don't have the same type of energy that we used to have. So the Bible says, remember God in your youth. Remember God in your prime. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter, verse 6 to 10. Remember, we're talking about planting the seeds of salvation. It says in the morning, sow the seed. And in the evening, withhold not thine hand, for you know not whether you shall prosper, either this or that, or what shall prosper, either this or that, whether they both shall be alike. Truly, the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, Yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. So we got a lot of dark days, brothers and sisters. But again, don't get so wrapped up in what you feel is happening to you. Oh, man, uh, uh, this person did this and they over there hating on me. It ain't about you. You making yourself this big when it's about God, brothers and sisters. It ain't about you. If you remove yourself out of the way, then you won't feel the way you feel sometimes. About people, about things, and about situations. But that's that devil that comes with that spirit and deposits inside of your brain to make you think that it's about you. You are just a small piece on God's board that he is using brothers and sisters for everybody else's edification and for his glorification. So when you go through that trial and you come out on the other side and you can talk about how God is still good, that's what God is looking for from you. You are still alive. How you should have been locked up for life living the life that you used to live back in the day, but God avoided that for you. He gets the praise. He gets the glory, brothers and sisters. 
Verse 9, rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. So we don't get away with nothing, brothers and sisters, not you or I. So all the things that we are doing, it's being recorded, brothers and sisters. It says, therefore, remove sorrow from your heart. Why would God tell you to remove sorrow from your heart? Because a lot of things come up out of sorrow. When you are upset, when you are going through something, I'm going to be honest with you, brothers and sisters, and I want you to listen to me, and I know I ain't the only one, but when I'm broke and when I'm having financial problems, I start thinking about everybody who owed me money. You see the way the devil works? I'm like, man, I wouldn't be broke if everybody just paid me who owed me. I don't think about that when I got money in my pocket. But when I start getting low on money and bills start coming in and those credit card bills start charging me interest. Mortgage start coming up and I'm having car problems and I got to get it fixed. An unexpected $600 and $700 uh, uh, automotive bill. I start thinking about everybody who owed me money. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, I'm just letting you know, um, you know, don't forget about your boy. You know what I'm saying? So again, when we are going through things in our life, brothers and sisters, it alters our mind. And that's why we got to stay strong in the faith. God is going to work it out. God is going to work it out. I just had a sister who came to me and she said, Brother Black Ice, she said, you know, I'm down with you. But there are certain people who are down with you that I can't get with. Certain people you down with that, owe, that owes me money. I said, all right, cool. Let me see if I can help out this situation. I went to the person and I said, hey, God has really blessed you. And God has really provided for you through this season. I said, there's somebody that you had a relationship with. And there's some unfinished business that you have with that person. I'm asking you to call that person and make it right. Eventually. I got a phone call from that person. She said, I don't know what you said to that person, and I don't know what you did, but I just want to thank you. So I didn't understand what she was talking about. I understood that maybe the person took care of whatever it was that that person was supposed to do. But when I talked to the person today, that person told me, I owed that person $50. And it had been a long time since I had paid that person off, the person that said that they had a problem with them to me. And then the person told me, I didn't back. I gave them $100 back. You never know who God is going to work through. And you never know what need that person had for that money at that time. But you don't have to curse nobody out. You don't have to go all on social media. God will send someone to you to help you through that situation. And now all these uh, old feelings and all these old harboring things is going away, brothers and sisters. And it was done in a peaceful manner. I appeal to that person's conscience and the spirit of God within that person. I appeal to that. I didn't come to that person in an angry manner and say, man, you know you ain't right. I just, you need to take care of. You got some unfinished business. You, you a man of God. Let's do the right thing. And that appealed to his conscience. And he did the right thing. So brothers and sisters, again, watering the seed of truth. We got to get this word in us each and every day. Therefore, we carry it around for God. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. We got to water the seed, brothers and sisters. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. 
Let's talk about it. Everyone has a role to play and a job to do. This is an assembly line. At the end is salvation. Again, just as we said last week, don't try to do it all. It's okay. If you are the, 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 the one who just plants the seed of curiosity, it's okay. See, as I said last week, we, we, we want credit for converting people. Oh, I, I was the one that converted this sister right here. I was the one that converted that brother. I was, I, I was the one. So because you're trying to be the one, you overfeed people. You give them too much information at one time and they can't contain everything. As we said last week, you don't feed a baby meat. You feed a baby milk. And then somebody else will come after you or let them come back to you. But you don't try to give them everything in 10, 15 minutes. No, brothers and sisters. Everyone has a job to do. First Corinthians, the third chapter. And we're going to go down. We're going to go down. Sister Key Israel always get on me when I'm reading uh, verses 1 through 11. So we're going to go down. So we're going to go through, we're going to start at verse uh, 5. Well, let's start at verse 4. It says, for a while one saith, I am Paul, and I am Apollos. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who then is Apollos? But ministers by whom you beloved, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted... Apollo has watered. Again, we're talking about planting the seeds of salvation. I have planted, Apollos have watered, but God gave the increase. You see how it goes back to God? God gave the increase. So then neither is he that plant of anything, neither he that water, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation. Another builds upon that. But let every man take heed how he builds upon for other foundation can no man lay than that is than that can for I'm sorry for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ so brothers and sisters let's do our job and you got to water that seed let's go to the book of philippians the second chapter we're going to read one verse key just one verse out of this one Philippians, the second chapter. In order for the seed to grow, you must have a certain mindset. Philippians, the second chapter, verse five. Let this mind be in you. The same which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus had a way of dealing with things. He had a way of handling things. Did Jesus get upset and angry? Yes, he did. Brothers and sisters. But the Bible says, be angry and sin not. See, our issue is we act off of that anger. And then we say something that we can't take back. Or we do something that we can't take back. If you just slow down... Calm down, be patient, wait a moment, chill. God is going to open up the door. I just had one of my co-workers die last week. I'm sorry, the week before last. And we have been experiencing some things with management. This brother was in so much pain, he had fell off a roof doing some work on the roof maybe about 10, 15 years ago. And he had neck surgery, back surgery. 
But he was in so much pain that he took pain meds every day. He came to work smelling like Ben Gay. You would know when he was at work because the ointment and, to, and the lit, uh, uh, what is it called? The liniment that he uh, wore every day. And he was so upset that the bosses made him go to the employee health service to get him checked out to see if he was fit to work. And he had 31 years of service. And because I'm a union steward, I said, hey, you know, we got to make sure that these bosses are not trying to fire you. Well, he was upset that I said that to him. So he went in my Facebook inbox and he said, hey, um, you shouldn't have said that to me and teach the Bible and that you go to Bible camp and you know, you shouldn't say that to me and you wouldn't like it if she was doing to you what she did to me. My first reaction was to snap on him and say, hey, why would you come to me like that when you know that I've looked out for you? Why would you say this to me as if you know that I, I, I don't do the things that you need for me to do to protect you? Why would you say this to me? I was... About to type that to him. But something in my spirit just said, hey, when you get a chance, give me a call. I never heard back from him again. A day or so later, we found out that he had passed away. I was so glad that I didn't send the response that my flesh wanted me to send this man. That I allowed the spirit of God to work in me and I calmed myself down. And I said, hey, you can't take this personal. Because this brother has a spirit on him. He's angry. He's upset. He's in pain. Sometimes we got to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Go in my Facebook inbox today. And I can acknowledge and give glory to God that. He held my tongue. He held typing. He allowed me to discipline myself to say, okay, look, when you get a chance, give me a call. So brothers and sisters, we got to have that same mind in us that Christ Jesus had in him that when the devil approached him and tried to tempt him, he just looked at the devil and he said, hey, is it not written that thou shalt not worship the Lord your God? Brothers and sisters, when we see the spirit of Satan, that's how we got to deal with it. We got to deal with it with the word of God, not only inside of us, but in our conversation also as well. Well, I hate that you feel that way about me. And I hate that you have to say those things that you're saying about me. But it's obvious that you don't know me very well. And it's okay because I don't feel the way, same way about you that you feel about me. And it's okay. And I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to not only pray for you, but I'm going to pray for our friendship, our relationship, us being co-workers. Because I choose not to go around being upset and angry at people every day. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. And if I said something or did something to offend you then I apologize for that. It was not intentional. Can we be big enough to do that? My brother called me this morning from Florida and he said, hey, I, I owe you an apology. And although um, whatever issues were there, I love my brother enough not to harbor it. And I felt like it was unnecessary. This is something that he needed to do for him. I owe you an apology. And I want to say I apologize, brother. I accept your apology. But I want you to know that we've been knowing each other for over 30 years. And there's nothing that you can do that can change the love I have in my heart for you. So, brothers and sisters, let's, let's, let's move forward and walk forward. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. And we are almost there, brothers and sisters. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. We have to change our thinking from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses 12 through 16. Now we have received. 
spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Ghost teach, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For whom have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, the same that was in Christ Jesus. Why is that so important, brothers and sisters? It's because we must prepare ourselves for the harvest. Again, we must prepare ourselves for the harvest. The book of Luke, the eighth chapter, the book of Luke, the eighth chapter, and we're going to read, we're going to skip through this, we're going to start at verse four, be careful of where you plant the seeds, brothers and sisters, where you water the seed, where you grow the seed, and the environment in which you grow the seed in. All right, so let's skip down and let's go for the sake of time. Let's go to verse four. It says, and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that have an ear... Let them hear. They didn't understand what he was talking about, brothers and sisters. But then he begins to break down what the parable means. Let's go to verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the evil or the devil. I'm going to say that again. Isn't this what we're talking about? Planting the seed of curiosity, the seed of confirmation. And then right before you get the water to seed, the devil is going to come. You got to resist the devil and he will flee. And then you can water the seed, continue to water it, water it, water it. Get a little bit of this God in you every day. And then you begin to prepare for the harvest. I'm going to read that again. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Have you let the devil take the word of God out of your heart with your anger, with your hurt, with your pain, with your disappointment? Verse 13. They on the rock are they. When they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that that fell on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he ha has lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick 
that they which enter in may see the light. Does God see the light inside of you? You go to Bible class, you go to church. When people look at you, do they see the light of God inside of you? Verse 17, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Brothers and sisters, you can fool everybody, but you can't fool God. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. The book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. We got to prepare ourselves for the harvest, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Once the harvest is ready, the gardener will come to gather the harvest, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, 1 through 4. It says, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of the pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you, Lord, and I will gather. The Lord is saying, I will gather the remnant of my flock. Out of the countries where I have driven them. Who sent us to America? Who sent us to Trinidad? Who sent us to Jamaica? Who sent us throughout the four corners of the earth? The Lord said, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them. And will bring them again to their fold. And they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. We ain't got to worry about nothing that we going through over here in this country, brothers and sisters, because the Lord himself is going to come and remove these things from us. Again, the Lord is going to come. And remove these things from us. Let's go to the book of Zechariah. The 8th chapter. The book of Zechariah. The 8th chapter. As we look at our current situation. Being the sons and daughters of slaves. Brothers and sisters. And our sojourn. Through the four corners of the earth. Being oppressed. Being, being the bottom. The tail and not the head. As we look at those things. We understand that according to Deuteronomy 28 chapter, which we read last week, that we are a cursed people. And God put that on us because we did not listen, hearken to his voice to keep his statute, his laws, and his commandments. But the question is, after this is all over, what do we have to look forward to? What is our hope? Again, we got to prepare ourselves for the harvest. Zechariah, the eighth chapter. Verses 7 through 15, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be strong, ye that hear. In the, these days, these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. For before these days, there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men, everyone, against his neighbor. Again, the Lord said, I set all, every man, against his neighbor. But now, but now, I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. 
and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of the people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as you were a curse among the nations, O house of Judah and O house of Israel, so will I set you or save you and you shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to, to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, I will repent not. So again, and so, so again, have I thought in those days to do well unto Jerusalem and unto the house of Judah, fear ye not. So the Lord is coming back to reverse this thing. He had to chastise us. He had to put us in this thing. But man, Lord, have mercy on us. We've been in this thing so long, Lord, but we ain't got nobody to blame but our ancestors and ourselves. But again, the Lord is coming back to reverse this thing. We got two more places to go. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. The Lord said he's going to reverse this curse, brothers and sisters, that we're under. Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Let's go ahead and read it. What is it that we have to look forward to prepare ourselves for this harvest? We are not too far away, brothers and sisters, from God that we are beyond being retrieved. However, he still is going to require us to do the same thing that he required us to do in the beginning. Keep his statutes, his laws, and his commandments. Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, verse 1. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee and thou shalt call them to mind all among all the nations where the Lord thy God have driven you. We keep reading in this Bible that the Lord scattered us, brothers and sisters. What further proof do you need that the reason why we are over here is because of disobedience? Verse two, and shall return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. That then the Lord thy God would turn thy captivity and have compassion upon you. And will return and gather you from all the nations where the Lord your God have scattered you. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, that means the earth, that's the second heaven, brothers and sisters, from this will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from this will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that they that you may live. That's Deuteronomy the 30th chapter verses 1 through 6. And so we got to close out brothers and sisters. It's been a wonderful time sharing the word of God with each and every one of you and myself brothers and sisters because I still have work to do myself. I get discouraged. I get weak. It's times that I get tired and I feel like, man, I don't want to do this this week. I don't want to do this today. But I have an obligation, brothers and sisters. And I have an oath that I made with the Lord. That whether I'm tired or not feeling well, if I can help it and if I can be here, brothers and sisters, then I have to be here to do the work of the Lord. As I continue to straighten my life in the process. We are all a work in process or progress, brothers and sisters. So I want you to know that, yes, your brother Black Ice gets tired, he gets weak.
frustrated. Sometimes we're like, man, you know, but um, I push for it for your edification and for, for, for God's glorification, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I give all praise and honor to him. Let's get ready to prepare for the coming of the great gardener, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Last place, the book of John, the 15th chapter. The book of John, the 15th chapter, and no key. I won't read verses 1 through 27. <laughs> John, the 5th chapter, and let's, let's go down. Let's see where I'm going to start. Let's start at verse 25. You could read verses 1 through 27 on your own. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. The Lord is coming to gather what was produced by the seed, which is the word of God. He's coming to gather this harvest. Verse 26, for as the father have life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life in himself and have given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry, that was John the fifth chapter, but it was a purpose why I read that too, brothers and sisters, because again, we got to prepare for Jesus. All authority and power was given to him by the Father. And he has the power to execute judgment. And so we got to watch ourselves as we develop the seed inside of us to be worthy of him when he comes. See how I fixed that, Sister Key? Let's go to John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 27. And again, I will read, start at verse 20. It says, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept, if they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. So what makes you think that you ain't going to go through nothing if Jesus went through something? How vain are we to believe that we're not going to go through hell if Jesus went through it for us. Verse 21, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. So Jesus removed it and exposed it. He that hate of me, hate of my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And you also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Brothers and sisters, Jesus came to give us the word of God. That was the best gift that he could come and give, along with his sacrifice for the sins of the world. And now that he has given us his word and he has committed that sacrifice, it is all up to us now. And so whether you are a teacher or someone who receives the teaching, that seed of curiosity must first be planted. And then the seed of confirmation must come after that. But then no one realize that Satan is going to come and try to take you away and pull, pull you away. 
And that's why you must continue to water the seed as you go along. And all of this is to prepare you for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because his job is to gather the crop. Brothers and sisters, we thank you for your time. We thank you for listening to another edition of the Bible Show Truth Hour here on POET Radio. If you are on YouTube, then go to Facebook and like our Facebook group page, The Truth Hour Bible Show. If you are on Facebook Live, then go and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Truth Hour TV. If you would like to be added to our text message invite reminder list, then text your name in the keywords Truth Hour to 312-719-7310. And if you would like to be added, or if you would like to become a member of Team Truth Hour, then, brothers and sisters, all we ask is that you reach out to us so that we can go over with you the what we believe and what the requirements are. But everything is to help us get out this word and to share this word and to do the work of God through this online ministry. We need your help, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much. God bless you as we stand up and face the east and pray 